Okay, so um, we did finish the test up on Thursday. I'm mean, gonna have a few people yet to finish it up, so I'm not gonna pass them back today. If you're one of those, if you wanna stay after class today or Wednesday, either one will work to finish it up. Or if there's time tomorrow that works for you, just let me know. So today we're gonna move in, we're gonna talk more about algebra today. And a lot of what we're gonna talk about today is going to be review. Um, we've talked about place values a little bit before. And if you recall, our place values in our numbering system, because it is what we call a base 10 numbering system, are exponents with a base of 10. So this is the ones place, but it can be labeled 10 to the zero. This is the tens place, but that can be labeled 10 to the one. Hundreds place can be labeled 10 to the second. The one thousands would be 10 to the third. 10 thousands, 10 to the fourth. 100 thousands, 10 to the fifth. And so on. The tenths, you know, one tenths would be 10 to the negative one. 10 to the negative two and going down that way. In our standard numbers, in our whole numbers or integers even, a number like 5,374 can be written just 5,374 because the location of the digit implies its place value. We know that the full form of that number is 5, instead of writing out thousands, I'm just going to write 10 to the thirds, plus 3, times 10 squared, plus 7, 10 to the first, or just 10, plus 4. And I'm not going to even write the 10 to the 0 because that's just 1. So that's one way of writing that out in expanded form. When I look at my algebraic numbers, they take on the same form. For example, I might have 5x squared plus 2x plus 9. And you can see the similarities here. Instead of the bases of the exponents being 10, in an algebraic number, the bases of the exponents are x. Instead of 10 squared, this is the x squared's place. Instead of 10 to the 1 or the 10's place, this is the x's place. 10 to the 0 is 1. Well, x to the 0 is 1 as well. So that last digit is always 1's no matter what. Because of that, these algebraic numbers will behave pretty much just like our standard numbers, our integers. I can take something like 5x squared plus 2x plus 9 and add it to 7x squared plus 5x plus 13. And here we see one of our big differences. We've already seen one, then that is that algebraic numbers must always be written out in this long form because we can't abbreviate them. Because the place values aren't always necessarily just x. The second difference we see is that we can have actually two digits in a single place value. With our integers, you can only have up to nine and then you've got to carry. Here we can have a 13 in that place value. It doesn't matter. But when we go to add these, they're going to add exactly like our integers or whole numbers do. So we write out the first number, and then we're going to line everything up. So the 7x squared goes under the 5x squared. The 5x goes under the 2x. And the 13 goes under the 9. Because when we add or subtract, we have to line up the digits so that we are only combining digits that have the same place value. So then 9 and 13 make 22. Again, note that there is no carrying, so we don't have to worry about carrying or borrowing or anything here. 2x plus 5x, 7x. Now this is a positive 22, so I put a plus in front of it. This is a positive 7x, so I'm going to put a plus in front of it. 5x squared and 7x squared, 
12x squared. Now that's positive 12x. I could put a plus in front of it, but since there are no other digits in front of it, I don't need that there. So that is just 12x squared plus 7x plus 22. So we've seen a couple of the differences between these algebraic numbers and our integers or whole numbers. We're going to find the third one now. And the third one has to deal with negatives. In our integers or whole numbers, either every digit is positive or every digit is negative. If I have a negative 328, well, that is a negative 310s, or 300s, I should say, and a negative 210s, and a negative 81s. Every digit is negative. In an algebraic number, each digit is free to be positive or negative on its own. I can have 6x squared minus 11x plus 7, where the only digit that's negative is the x digit here, plus 3x squared plus 8x minus 4. So again, the only negative digit is the 4. I'm still going to write these out and line up the columns. x squareds go under the x squareds. 8x goes under the negative 11x. My negative 4 goes under the positive 7. And I am still adding down the columns. So I have 7 plus a negative 4, which makes... Positive 3, good. Negative 11 plus 8. Negative 3x. And 6x squared plus 3x squared. 9x squared. So 9x squared minus 3x plus 3. I'm going to have you guys try one. Negative 7x squared plus 11x minus 9 plus 3x squared minus 12x plus 6. Go ahead and try that one in your notes. So we'll start on the right and work our way back to the left, just like with whole numbers. Negative 9 plus 6. Negative 3. 11x plus a negative 12x. Negative 1x or just negative x. Good. Negative 7x squared plus 3x squared. Negative 4x squared. Perfect. So negative 4x squared minus x minus 3. Any questions? Okay. Now subtraction works pretty much the same way. Now many of you were probably taught if you did algebra in high school of when you're adding just drop the parentheses and combine like terms. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Just a little bit of a more organized way of doing it. When we subtract it works pretty much the same way. 5x squared plus 7x plus 9 minus 2x squared plus 9x plus 2. So we'll line them up. 5x squared plus 7x plus 9. 2x squared goes under the 5x squared. So 9x goes under the 7x and the 2 ones goes under the 9 ones. This time we are subtracting down our columns. So 9 minus 2.
7 is positive 7. 7x seven minus 9x. Negative 2x. And 5x squared minus 2x squared. 3x squared. Good. So we get 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. I kept all the digits here positive on purpose. Subtraction gets much more difficult when we start throwing the negatives in there. So let's say we've got 8x squared minus 9x plus 4 minus 5x squared plus 7x minus 8. So again, we're going to write them out, 8x squared, negative 9x, positive 4. The 5x squared goes under the 8x squared. Positive 7x goes under the negative 9x. The negative 8 goes under the 4. And we are subtracting down our columns. Here, I usually write them off to the side so I can keep them straight. I've got 4 minus a negative 8 which is the same as 4 plus 8, or positive 12. Here I have negative 9 minus 7, which is the same as negative 9 plus a negative 7, which is negative 16. And then I left one easy for you, 8x squared minus 5x squared, 3x squared. Good. So those negatives, dealing with the integers, are what's going to come back to haunt you on this. Let's have you guys try one in your notes. Give that one a shot in your notes. So negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 11. So negative 7 minus negative 11. So negative 7 minus a negative 11 is going to be negative 7 plus 11, or positive 4. 5 minus a negative 7 would be 5 plus 7, or positive 12x. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 2 plus a negative 5, or... Negative seven x squared. How many of you got that one right? Okay. 
How many of you are really starting to hate negatives? So our next step then, we're going to look at the multiplying, which we've done actually done quite a bit already, where we've had things like 8x to the 3rd times 5x to the 7th minus 2x to the 4th. We've already done quite a bit of this, this distributing. We have the 8x to the 3rd times the 5x to the 7th. We're going to multiply the counts. 8 times 5 is 40. And then you multiply the names. x to the 3rd times x to the 7th. x to the 10th. Then 8x to the 3rd times a negative 2x to the 4th. Multiply the counts. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. x to the 3rd times x to the 4th. x to the 7th. So there we go. 40x to the 10th minus 16x to the 7th. Bless you. Today we're going to add another step to that, just throwing in extra variables. So we might have 5x squared y to the third z times 3x to the fifth z to the fourth minus 7 x to the third y squared z plus 4 x y. So this is just distributing, even though there's three terms inside the parentheses. We're going to take the 5x squared y to the third z times the 3x to the fifth z to the fourth. So we combine the counts first. 5 times 3 is 15. Then we take each name separately. We've got x squared and x to the fifth make x to the seventh. Now we've got y to the third, but there isn't a y over here. So what does that mean? It stays y to the third, yes. It doesn't change. Now this z by itself, we think of it as z to the 1. So z times z to the 4th makes z to the 5th. Good. Now we move on to the next term. So it's the 5x squared y to the 3rd z times a negative 7x to the 3rd y squared z. So we multiply the counts. 5 times negative 7. Negative 35. x squared times x to the 3rd x to the fifth, y to the third times y squared, y to the fifth, z times z, z to the second, or z squared. And now it's the 5x squared y to the third z times the 4xy, which will give us 5 times 4 is 20, x squared times x, x to the third, y to the third times y, y to the fourth, and then z has nothing to multiply by, so it just stays z. What do you think? Let's have you try one. Try that one in your notes. See what you come up with.
So let's see how you did. 4x to the 5th, y to the 3rd, z squared, times 7x to the 4th, y. Well, 4 times 7, 28. x to the 5th times x to the 4th, x to the 9th. y to the 3rd times y, y to the 4th, and nothing to combine with z squared. 4, x to the 5th, y to the 3rd, z squared, times negative 9. x to the 3rd, y to the 3rd, z squared. 4 times negative 9. Negative 36. x to the 5th times x to the 3rd. x to the 8th. y to the 3rd times y to the 3rd. y to the 6th. z squared times z squared. z to the 4th. Now our 4x to the 5th, y to the 3rd, z squared, times 5x, y to the 5th, z, 4 times 5, 20, x to the 5th times x, x to the 6th, y to the 3rd times y to the 5th, y to the 8th, and z squared times z, z to the 3rd. What do you think? Not too bad? Okay, good. Well, next, I know we've seen these a little bit before, but we're going to do more of them now. Um, we might have 3x plus 7 times 2x plus 5. And remember, we compared this to multiplying two-digit whole numbers. If I have 37 times 42, do I start here with the 2? I do 2 times 7, then 2 times 3, and then I do 4 times 7 and 4 times 3. It's the exact same process over here. I write this out. It's 3x plus 7 times 2x plus 5. So now I've got 5 times 7 is positive 35. 5 times 3x, 15x. Good. And now just like up here when I went from the 2, if I moved over to the 4, I had to leave a blank down here. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to leave a blank spot there. 2x times 7, a positive 14x, and 2x times 3x, 6x squared. And then again, just like I would with the whole numbers, I'm going to add up my columns. So I've got just the positive 35 here. 15x and 14x is 29x, and 6x squared. Some of you are probably taught a process called FOIL, as we've mentioned before. The F in FOIL stood for first, right? So that meant we multiplied the first digit of each number. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Notice we got that down here. O stood for outer or outside. So we took the outside digits, the 3x times the 5, which is 15x. Again, we had that one down here. I stood for inner or inside. So inside two digits, 7 times 2x, 14x. Again, we had that down here. And the L stood for last. So we took the last digit of each. 7 times 5 is 35. Notice we had that down here. Here we just have to combine the 15x and the 14x. 6x squared plus 29x plus 35. When I do this, I most often will do it with FOIL. Although this here is the full process. This is what's really going on there. FOIL is just a shortcut to avoid having to rewrite the problem. That's really all it is.
One of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of foil is what happens when you run into something like this. Foil doesn't work on here now because we got a middle digit. That one would be flaming oil. Now I realize you can just adapt the foil and, and go with it, but doing it the way I did with the long multiplication, you don't have to change anything. 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. I always put the digit, the number with the most digits on top, no matter what type of multiplication I'm doing. 3x minus 7, and I'm multiplying. Negative 7 times 6. Negative 42. Negative 7 times negative 5x. Positive 35x. Negative 7 times 2x squared. So negative 14x squared. 3x times 6. Now, of course, I'm going to leave a blank spot here. 3x times 6 is 18x. 3x times negative 5 is a negative 15x squared. 3x times 2x squared is 6x to the third. So I've got a negative 42 here. 35x and 18x is 53x. Negative 14, negative 15 is a negative 29x squared. And 6x to the third. Not so bad. Now, of course, FOIL, like I said, would still work up here. We just have to modify it. We're basically doing repeated distribution. 3x times 2x squared is the 6x squared. 3x times the negative 5 is negative 15x. This should be x to the third here, should it? So 6x to the third. 3x times negative 5x is negative 15x squared. 3x times 6 is positive 18x. Negative 7 times 2x squared is negative 14x squared. Negative 7 times negative 5x is a positive 35x. And negative 7 times 6 is negative 42. So we've got the 6x to the third. Negative 15 and negative 14x squared is negative 29x squared. 8x and 35x is 43x. What did I do wrong? This should be an 18, so that should be 15, 53x. That should be an 18x there, so that should be 53x. And then my negative 42. So we get the same answer either way. It's just that this makes more sense to me to do it out as long multiplication. Any questions? Let's have you guys try one. Have you tried that one in your notes?
Okay, before I do this one, just a little bit of a survey. How many of you did it by just doing the FOIL type method? Okay, and the rest of you did it out the long way? Okay. So I'm going to keep doing it out the long way then, since we've got a good share of the class that's doing that. So negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. Negative 5 times 7x negative 35x. We'll leave a blank here. 2x times negative 3, negative 6x, and 2x times 14x. Or sorry, 2x times 7x is 14x squared. So we've got 15, negative 35 and negative 6 is negative 41x, and 14x squared. What do you think? So then our last operation, of course, is division. And we've seen this with our variables before, but we're going to expand it a little bit. Um, we have something like 18 x to the fifth, y to the third, z to the fourth, divided by 6 x, y squared, z squared. Just like with multiplication, we combine the numbers. So what is 18 divided by 6? 3, yep. X to the 5th divided by X. X to the 4th, good. We think of that as X to the 1. 5 minus 1 is 4, so X to the 4th. Y to the 3rd divided by Y squared. Just Y. 3 minus 2 is 1, so y to the 1, or just y. And then z, z to the 4th divided by z squared. z squared. We've done that before, and we've simplified fractions with that. We can expand this out to be more than one digit on top. Um, the theory here is let's take something like 846, if I'm dividing that by 2, I just go through each digit at a time. 2 goes into 8 how many times? 4, and there's nothing left over. 2 goes into 4. Twice, and there's nothing left over. 2 goes into 6. 3 times, and there's nothing left over. 423. So as long as there's nothing left over at each step, you can just go through and divide each digit like that. And when we're dealing with algebraic numbers, there are no decimals or remainders or anything like that at each step. Or at least there's no carryover from one step to the next, I should say. There could be decimals. But let's take 28x to the fifth y squared minus 42x to the third y to the third. And I am going to divide by 7 x to the third y squared. Now it could be written like that, or it could be written with a divided by 7 x to the third y squared at the end. I just, it makes more sense to me to have it over vertically like this in the fraction bar. So I usually don't write it that way. So we're going to do it digit by digit. 28 divided by 7 is 4. x to the 5th divided by x to the 3rd. 5 minus 3 is squared, so x to the 2 or x squared. And then what happens to the y's? They cancel out. y squared divided by y squared is y to the 0 or just 1 or nothing. Next we have the negative 42, x to the 3rd, y to the 3rd. Divided by our 7x to the third y squared. Negative 42 divided by 7. Negative 6. x to the third divided by x to the third. Cancels out. y to the third divided by y squared. Just y. So 4x squared minus 6y is that answer. So 
32x to the seventh y squared minus 40x to the fifth y to the third plus 24 x to the third y to the fourth divided by 8 x to the third y squared. So now again, I wrote this a little bit differently, but it still means the same thing. I can just move this down here and make it look like this. So 32 x to the seventh y squared divided by my 8 x to the third y squared. What's 32 divided by 8? 4 x to the seventh divided by x third x to the fourth and the y squareds cancel out. Negative 40 x to the fifth y to the third divided by 8 x to the third y squared. Negative 40 divided by 8. Negative 5 x to the fifth divided by x to the third x squared y to the third divided by y squared y to the 1 or just y. Then my 24x to the third y to the fourth divided by 8x to the third y squared. 24 divided by 8. Positive 3. x to the third divided by x to the third. Cancels out. And y to the fourth divided by y squared. y squared. Any questions on those? Let's let you try one. Give that one a shot in your notes. So let's see how you did. 48x to the fifth y divided by 12x to the third y. 48 divided by 12? 4x to the x squared. Good. 5 minus 3 is 2 or x to the second or x squared. y cancels out. y divided by y cancels out. 36x to the 4th, y to the 4th, divided by 12x to the 3rd, y. 36 divided by 12. Positive 3. x. Just x. 4 minus 3 is 1, so it's just x. y. y to the 3rd. 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 60x to the 3rd, y to the 7th, divided by 12x to the 3rd, y. Negative 5. Negative 60 divided by 12 is negative 5. X cancels out. X to the third divided by X to the third cancels out. And Y to the sixth. Y to the seventh. Seven minus one is six. Any questions? Okay. I think that's close enough to time for our first break. Or for our break, let's uh, come back at 928.